My name is Amy Lynn. I am a cosplayer, gamer, anime enthusiast, a newbie at comic books, and all around geek girl. Um, I'm here with my very good friends. Anna Mom Winter, how's it going? Um, sci fi nerd galore, comic book fan, all around weirdo, that kind of thing. Yeah. The huge. The huge. <laughs> And you guys are a part of the very famous XX Girls. And how exactly was XX formed? Like, how did it come about that you guys were to make this group of cosplaying women? Um, well, we hung out for a long time before we joined XX or decided that we were going to do it. Um, it was mostly just because everybody knew us as a group of girls who hung out together at Comic Con. And I mean, it's Amy and Angelica, and, you know, Jessica's with us. So everybody knew us. And we decided we were going to make it a group name. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Instead of everybody's going to be there, it's just XX girls are going to be there. Yeah, you might as well just make it into a group, right? right. It's just easier easy. to say because we're lazy. Mm -hmm. To say we're all together, and then you can make boosts and stuff, which is awesome. Exactly. What exactly does XX stand for? Where did the name come from? Um, well, we wanted a name that was kind of cryptic that um, only fans would really understand, and we wanted it to be somewhat geeky. So uh, XX actually is what females have. It's the girl chromosome. Um, so it's kind of like geek terminology mixed with um, female empowerment of the nerd culture uh, <laughs> combined. And it's stuck, and it's, I mean, I think it's stuck mainly because people mistake it for porn, which is definitely not porn. No, I thought the same. Well, maybe not. Sorry. They just got lazy. They just got lazy and couldn't write triple X. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> no, I like that. That's We're one X away from being porn. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a good but one. not true. People <laughs> don't see the ideas. Yeah. Oh, did you two, especially you two, know each other from before? Or did you kind of meet through conventions and stuff? Yeah, I would say that all of us met through conventions, except for me and Angelica. We were um, best friends in high school, and then we kind of just migrated from high school beyond that and then um, met everyone else at conventions, I think. Is that the same with you? Yeah, I pretty much met everybody at conventions. I think Angelica was actually the first girl in the group that I had met, and then from her oh. I met... I yeah. thought you knew Jessica first. No, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of just progressed into this whole thing. I think it's kind of cool that women can meet women through conventions and become friends. Like, I know I didn't know any of the geek girls. I knew two of the geek girls, but now they're, like, my best friends. Like, I love all the girls I've met. So it's wicked that there's other girls out there who feel the exact same way. Right. Yeah. We got to, like, bond together because if not, For sure. we stand alone and it's just a super horror. We're on a pedestal and eggs at you. But... <laughs> I feel like we just had a Spice Girls moment. Oh, right there. Yeah. oh my gosh, did it just on my platform? What? <laughs> uh, what events have you guys, like, what are your favorite events that you've ever been a part of, and what kind of events do you like doing the most? Oh, Phoenix Comic Con, for sure. I think it's where we most hang out. I mean, it's the it's most common convention that we have. Yeah, because we're all, I mean, we're all based in Arizona, so the biggest convention here is Phoenix Comic Con, which is like San Diego Comic Con's little baby brother, which is actually growing pretty, pretty big. Yeah, it's um, the same in numbers. Number convention in Southwest. Yeah, so I mean, it's so much fun. There's always like really amazing big name guests that are there. Uh, I mean, huge parties at the uh, Hyatt Hotel across the street, exactly. which everybody hangs out at. <laughs> oh, like, that's that's awesome. <laughs> oh, it's just a blast. See, it's funny because here in Toronto, it's the other way around. Our Comic Con is smaller than our Fan Expo. Our Fan Expo gets like 25,000 people, and our Comic Con is it's like its baby brother, which is funny because the Comic Cons over in the States are bigger than all the smaller conventions. Yeah. So. <laughs> Kind of the all other around world. the world, everything else is called expos, like MCM Expo in London is huge, but London Comic Con is tiny. We're yeah. the, the exact opposite. You know, I don't even think we have very many expos. We have horror expos, but that's about it. Uh, what can fans expect if they were to become fans of your fan page? What do you primarily use your fan page for? To bitch about upcoming things. Bitch <laughs> 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 <Did you> complain. <laughs> um, well, XX, we have uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, we have it all, but I mean, mainly it's us updating everyone on like what kind of nerdy things we're doing. So like what kind of conventions are coming up. Every now and then we'll post like crazy videos um, 
either reviews or just original skits that we want to do. Um, recently, we did like a Borderlands 2 inspired video, which should be up fairly soon. It's in the, it's in the last uh, stages of production. So I'm really excited about it. Um, hopefully, hopefully it's a success. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> I know. <it's> like, uh... <laughs> I'm pretty sure we just had one of your Borderlands photos up on Geek Girls not too long ago. I think it was yours, Amy, if I'm not mistaken in one of our um, contributor albums. I'm not sure I'm gonna have to check that out, but we're definitely gonna have to get those Borderland photos up because I actually creep them and I'm in love with them. So <laughs> we're gonna have to use those. Uh, what does being a geek girl mean to each of you? I know that we have our site, but in a way XX and geek girls are connected because we are all geek girls. And on our site, we like to show that geek girls can be sexy, classy, and nerdy at the same time. You don't have to look a certain way. What does it mean to you guys to be geek girls? I don't know. For me, it's everyday life. Like it doesn't necessarily mean something to me. It's just the way I am. And uh, I have such a vast array. I, I mean, it's for all of us girls. We have a vast array of things we're interested in and things we like to do. And in order to be able to share that with the world and uh, if they want to consider us like geek girls or nerd girls or kind of peg hole us into that, I think that's fine. I don't mind. But I like showing people that, you know, girls can be interested in the same things that boys can be interested in without being, you know, obsessive or, or weird or, well, I'm kind of weird. But. Yeah, I was like, well, I don't know. People call me weird all the time. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, one of my favorite things is that, like, the geek genre is so big, too. Like, me mm -hmm. and Anna alone, like, our, our lists would be, to like, two totally different things. But it is, like, it's not... I mean, I guess it's something that you can be proud of, but more or less, it's what she said. It's like a lifestyle. It's just like, these right. are things I'm interested in, and I'm going to be vocal about them because, like, they're awesome, and they deserve recognition. I don't know. Right. And if I want to take super cute pictures in, like, Star Trek panties, then I'm going to take pictures in Star Trek panties. Because <laughs> I love Star Trek. Because yeah. I love Star Trek. <laughs> and Star Wars, people. Which actually feels my next question because we actually come under fire for slut shaming. I don't know if you guys, yeah. you guys are obviously aware of this, that being girls who model and who embrace their bodies, embrace their sexuality, who decide to put on a Bubba Fett helmet and some panties mm -hmm. are all of a sudden sluts or seeking attention. Now, what is your opinion on that? If you could say one thing to the people out there who say these things, what would it be? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> No, seriously, though, because, like, um, I just got back from Star Wars Celebration 6, which was in Florida, like, a month or two ago, and I had this great bikini that one of my friends made, and it had the Imperial Cog on it, oh, yeah. and my boyfriend is a Mandalorian, so I put his helmet on, and when we were in the pool, like, it's a big pool party where all the girls put on either their helmets or their boyfriend's helmets and take pictures in bikinis by the pool, and it's fun. Like, I don't understand why there's anything wrong with that. And for people to say that these girls are sluts or whatever, just, I mean, if, if you guys take pictures in, in your, you know, headgear, your Xbox headgear or whatever on your computer with a webcam, I'm not going to call you some basement dwelling nerd, so why would you call me a <laughs> slut? Because you don't know me, you know? I, just because I like to express myself and I happen to like my body and I like to have, happen to like sexy things. You know, if I express it that way, then who cares? Yeah, I think for me, it's like, it's more or less a sign of empowerment. It's something different if you're like, you're dressed in like sexy Star Wars gear, but you know nothing about Star Wars. Like, that's a totally different thing. That's like, why, yeah. why are you using like geek culture as an excuse to dress that way? But I mean, if it's something that you love and you're willing to like show it off that way, it's just another sign of fandom. It's another sign of like women's empowerment. I don't think like, uh, it's just, it's just stupid. People, people get upset over the silliest things and right. I don't know, and I they think, hide behind a screen, so. And I think it's also hard for us because a lot of our characters that we can cosplay as and do love are sexualized characters. Right, and, and the people that, making the character design. Yeah, comic books <laughs> in general, it's boobs and ass and tight clothes and that's all it is. And it, there's nothing that's really not wrong with that. that. Right, exactly. <laughs> And there's, there's really, there's nothing wrong with it, I don't think. And, you know, I spend a lot of time and effort trying to make sure my body stays looking the way it does. And I spend hours being drilled on my side to get my Boba Fett tattoo. So I'm damn sure going to show it off. <laughs> 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 right? Okay. But. So 
what costumes are you wearing right now? Like, I know, obviously, Amy's in her Misty, and you're in your Baroness right now, kind of. (laughs) I know that you've had issues finding a cat suit. I've been creeping your Facebook. So what exactly does cosplay mean to you, and how did you get started cosplaying? Oh, I'll start that one. (laughs) Here we go. I started uh, cosplaying about four years ago with Angelica, which is another XX girl. Um, It was actually... Uh, one of our first conventions, and we were like, well, if we're going to go, we might as well like go all the way. So we went in costume. It was a total blast. And I feel like anyone that... <laughs> what? That's what she said. <laughs> I was waiting for that. I was trying not to, but... Uh, oh, bad panda. Sorry, anyways, continue. Anyways, like, after the first time that most people cosplay, it becomes... Uh, very addicting and then you just you want to keep doing it you want to challenge yourself and get better at it and try new characters and I mean four years later here I am still doing it still loving it um and yeah I don't remember the rest of the question but I <laughs> Anna um I've been cosplaying in Arizona since 09 and uh before that I'd always been making costumes by myself and you know Halloween was always my big holiday and I've been my mom used to make costumes when I was little and, you know, that kind of thing. So I've been costuming for a long time, but actual Comic-Con cosplay only started in 09. But yeah, it's just, it was a whole other level of costuming that's so nice. much fun. Well, didn't you do, didn't you always dress up for the Ren Fair too? Yes. Which is almost like... Yeah, historical costuming is where I started yeah. at. She's so impressive. You guys should... She is. She is. <laughs> I'm going to quickly end this because we're we're coming on the end with the lightning round. You guys are an- going to answer one after the other, and it's got to be the first answer that comes to your head, all right? Okay, oh, we'll take turns, too. Yeah. Okay, starting now. Favorite movie? And you should start. Uh, the Cell. Amy? Uh, I'm going to do them at the same time. Oh, we're both going to do them. Okay, uh, favorite movie? Funny Face. Favorite TV show? Does uh, anime count? Yeah. Shamurai Shampoo. I really don't know. I don't really watch TV. Okay. Uh, Doctor Who. Oh, no. Stargate SG1. Stargate. <laughs> Favorite geek celebrity? Um, Felicia Day. Uh, Nick Fillion. Oh, my gosh. I have watched her. Favorite superhero or villain? Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch. Not Scarlet Witch for me. I actually <laughs> really love Wonder Woman. Favorite game? It can be PC, PC console, or tabletop. Metal Gear 3. Uno. <laughs> Favorite superpower to have? Flight. I've always liked invisibility. You would, creeper. Fly on the wall. <laughs> Favorite character to dress up as? Oh, Ventress. Probably lightning. Hi, everyone. Roxy Lee sent us some questions that were asked by you guys, the fans, and uh, I'm Amy Lynn, and this is Anna Hunter. How's it going? Yeah, and we are going to answer them for you right now. So the first question is from Wandering Dana Harper. Which her question is: Since I'm a geek girl, I don't know if this will count as a fan question. Winky face. face. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. But, I, but I'd like to ask how they deal with babying us. How we deal with rude or inappropriate comments from people both online and in person. And what do we make of insane troll or scrutiny cosplayers face when their photos are posted on popular websites? Do you bother reading Reddit, etc., etc.? Well, me first, I don't. Um, I think I've only ever shown up on Reddit once for my Ventress, and the questions are so, or the uh, the comments are so stupid. I just really don't give two flying shits. But if someone goes on my web page, like my fan page or my Tumblr or my Twitter and starts attacking me or attacking any one of my fans or just being a righteous dick in general, I will put them in their place. I'm not one of those girls who will, you know, try and appease all the fans by being all oh, super sweet, whatever. I will smack you. And it keeps it real. I do. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't play around. I don't like mean people. And I understand that the internet is full of um, free speech and all that kind of crap, but there's a time and a place for it, and I'm going to exercise my right to smack a bitch if they say mean things on my page or any of my friends' pages, and I just can't stand the way 
Um, people think that just because it's the internet that they can say the most obscene, disgusting things. But yeah, how do you deal with it? Um, well, I mean, I don't really read or I guess check Reddit often. I try to stay away from anything that I, I get posted on because I don't like reading like positive or negative comments. I just feel like it. I'm too fragile. So, <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? People can say what they want. I'm just going to do what I love and I'm just going to like take care of myself rather than worry about what other people are saying about me. Right. Um, sometimes people will come to me and like tell me about like certain comments or certain pictures being posted and really it's just it like we're gonna forget about it in a week or two like nobody really cares after that so I mean people just want their spotlight sometime and I mean it's sometimes they gotta do it not the nicest way right and I don't think we have any particularly inappropriate photos that have ever been like leaked and everything that is on the internet for you and I I'm not sure about you know other people out there but uh, for you and I we don't have any for photos that we would be embarrassed for other people yeah. to see. Everything that's on my Facebook, that's on my uh, Tumblr account, is all open public, so I really don't give a crap what people think about it. I mean, obviously I do, or else I wouldn't post them, but I really don't care about people's negative comments. <laughs> but, yeah, if I hear one more fake boobs comment, I'm going to um, kill the internet. <laughs> I'm going to kill my boobs. Right? Just come <laughs> on. You know what? If you're complaining about them, there they go. Right? <laughs> That'll teach you. <ya. laughs> Um, all right. All right, so our second comment is from Michael Fell. He asks, how do you perceive the way geek and nerd culture has developed as technology has progressed, mainly in the last 30 years? Or how do you feel about people embracing their nerd geek side? Well, I think that being a geek or a nerd is like, it's a lot more accepted. Yeah. And I think it's a lot easier to... It's, it's more accessible, is what I'm trying to say. Like, um, if you want to be a geek or if you want to be a nerd, like, there's the internet now, first of all. So it's, like, yeah. it's so easy to, like, get in, into it and, like, um, just find a community. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't even know what I was going to say. I lost my thought. I, oh, oh, ah, mm. What I was going to say, like, on the, video, on the video game side of it is um, – there's this new stigma about like hardcore versus like casual gamers and it's because because of technology like gaming itself has become somewhat like of a more casual game like it's game genres and game franchises are, are choosing a more casual route for the casual player which in turn makes um, this huge like rift between people that played games like forever ago when like controls were actually kind of difficult to get used to and versus that being a button actually. versus people that are like oh just like hold the X button and it's the action button for everything in the whole game so I mean yeah I wouldn't know that and yeah I mean and video games, but, I mean for me that's like what I think about it is like. Right. Like, video game controls, because of technology, has become easier, so I think that's another reason why it's, um, it's just, it's easier for more people to grasp, and it's easier for more people to, like, accept video games, and, like, I don't know, become geeky about them, I guess. That's true. And in other standards, such as, um, for instance, Star Wars, with the huge news about Disney buying out <sighs> Star Wars, and the fact that Lucas has, a, or LucasArts has released three new films in the trilogy. This was obviously a few years ago now, but when I was growing up, I only had episodes um, four, five, and six. So, you know, it's one of those things where you could only get what was accessible then, and now there is all of that, plus all of the new stuff, and toys and TV shows, and they're just running and running and running. So kids nowadays, if you're into it, that's cool because it's everywhere. But when I was growing up, you couldn't go into a store and find an entire aisle of Star Wars toys. I mean, there was this much room, and there was like four <laughs> toys in the entire section. Um, same thing with comic book shops. In my hometown, there was one comic book shop. And now, um, in Phoenix, Arizona, where I live now, there are franchise shops and lots of mod pa shops, and you can buy comic books at Barnes and Noble now. You know, it's it's very accessible, and you can. There's the internet where you can download the Marvel.com has a great phone app for reading comic books over the phone. Or on your touch screen, whatever. Whatever. Oh, this smart thing in your hands. hands. <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's so much more accessible. When I when we were in high school, well, I don't know about you, or 
I was in high school, <laughs> it wasn't cool to be a nerd. You know, there was always those cool kids who knew everything about everything. But um, growing up on sci-fi and being a girl was never really accepted. I was always thought of as the tomboy. I mm-hmm. mean, um, still I am. <laughs> but it's a little more acceptable now for a girl to be a geek because of how accessible everything is and how um, the geek culture is now catering towards women, too, and not just for men. They you know, have women's empowerment all over in the comic book industry, which I think is brilliant, with uh, DC and Marvel doing those breast cancer ads. <sighs> Those were yeah. beautiful. So it's there. I mean, they're reaching out to more people than your hardcore geeks. Uh, you can be a casual geek and still know more about anything. And same thing with films. Um, you know, Marvel has all their films, and between the uh, DC and the Batman series that are out on on the DVD and in, yeah, and in films, you can be a whole fan of all that stuff. Like, just for instance, my father loves Green Lantern. He's only ever seen the films. He loves them. You know, it's the same thing with the Avengers and all the, the Marvel movies. He absolutely adores them, but doesn't know anything outside of the film world. Mm-hmm. But I really wouldn't consider my dad less of a geek because he loves Iron Man and Captain America so much. But who am I to judge somebody just because they like one specific section of an entire huge arc of, you know, geek history? So I think, I, I like where, where geekdom and nerdity is heading. It's good. Anime is still the, uh, the black sheep of the nerd family. The yeah. underdog. Yeah. <laughs> I'll always be there for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Third question. All right. This one is from Travis Keith. He asks, how do you feel about women gamers that flaunt everything they have and say things just to get likes and then complain about how they were treated in games, in games or on their pages? Cosplay is perfectly fine. That is an art form. You want to take this one away? Um, I think what he's trying to say is... Don't take pictures in the woods with your controller or nobody will make fun of you. Yeah, I mean, be realistic. I think this is something that uh, a lot of girls and guys even get swept away in in, as as a... geek enthusiast is showcasing like what you own what kind of swag you have I mean it's just it's part of the culture and like when people do it I get excited about it so it's not like I don't I don't call it like whoring yourself out or whoring like your stuff out I think it's really cool to share like what you have versus what they have but that's why like all this stuff is on this wall is because like hey this is stuff I'm interested in and like you should show me what you're interested in and I mean so when you say that they're flaunting everything, I feel like, I feel like that's almost the wrong way to look at it. It's like they're sharing something that they like that you should probably like too with slut you. Shaming. What we talked about in the last video, slut shaming. Yeah, it's it's sharing an interest which you guys like rather than bring people down. Like I think the community needs to bring more people up. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I from what my standard is, um, from what I understand of the question. Uh, all the photos of girls online holding controllers over their nude breasts or, you well, know, having... Well, it really is. but Or holding a controller, an Xbox controller with the cord in your mouth. Like, number one, you should be tuned on your cords anyway. Did your parents teach you that? <laughs> and two, if a girl wants to show her sexuality by, you know, holding up her controller to her tits, who fucking cares? <laughs> it's hot. Stop complaining. Obviously, you like it because you're looking at it. I bet you looked at it for more than 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you had a with extra screen when you were done too. Whoa! Oh! I just got weird. <laughs> but no, I, seriously, it's just it's stupid. Yeah, but I do see what you mean when you're like how how they complain about being treated in the game. It's sometimes like when you do certain things, you kind of have to expect a certain audience, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like if if you are really so dumb to think that like you doing that is not going to bring those kind of people, then like you should be more prepared next time. Right. So it's like, if I post something, I better be able to back it up. So like, if I posted something that I don't know about, like, Star Trek would be a good example. Like, I like Star Trek, but I'm not, like, a huge fan. So if I started posting a bunch of stuff and then people, like, kind of hound me on it, like, if I can't back myself up, then it makes sense. Like, I I kind of deserve it because, like, I guess, you know, I don't, I don't know that much about it. So why would I post it just so that people would think that I'm cooler? Right. Yeah, and if a naked chick can own you at Call of Duty, then you need to check your pie hole. Just saying. 
I think it happens. All the time. All the time. <laughs> with anything. Not even just games. I mean, with women in comic books. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to take comics. pictures. We talked about this in the previous video of, you know, taking pictures in your underwear or doing nudie pictures with a comic book. As it's, long as you like it. I mean. Yeah. As long as you can back up your, your, your supposed nerdity with your nudity. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> That's yeah. all right. That's all right. Who cares? Yeah. Stop slut shaming, because every girl likes to feel pretty once in a while. And some of us weren't nice, thin, pretty girls when we were in high school, and transformed, and we want to show it off with our geeky set. So, zip it. She's lying though. I think she's a boy. Anyways, <laughs> guys, thank you so much for asking these questions. We had super fun um, thinking about it. Some of them are kind of intense. Like, I had oh, yeah. to think for longer than 10 seconds to answer. So, that was really cool. Geek Girls rock. You guys are amazing. I hope that we will see you in person someday in the very soon future. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you later. Peace. Hey guys, it's Roxy Lee with GeekXGirls.com and thank you so much for checking out this interview. It was a blast to do and I had so much fun talking with Amy Lynn and Anna Von Winter from the XX Girls. I want to give them an extended thank you for taking the time out to do this video. It was our first go, so it was choppy and there's, there's some stuff going on with it. But nonetheless, we had a lot of fun filming it and a lot of fun talking with each other. And I think we got to know the girls a little bit more skin deep. And you guys got to see that not only are they beautiful on the outside, but they're also so beautiful on the inside as well. Super intelligent, funny girls, down to earth, and just all around good people to chat with. So if you ever have the time, please check out their pages, drop them a line, get to know them a little bit better, and also check out geekxgirls.com, my page Roxy Lee, and keep watching our videos. We're going to have tons more content for you, more interviews, and you never know, you might see some more of the XX girls popping up. Who knows? But yeah, so thanks again, and have a good one. Cheers.